Many of the houses in Roslyn, Scotland are exact duplicates of one another. We could call them clones. Uh, the unique thing about Roslyn, Scotland is that right outside town at the Roslyn Institute, the very first mammal was cloned. She was named Dolly. Only a few months later, the cloning of mammals took another big step forward. Here we are, August 7th, 1997. ABS Global in DeForest, Wisconsin has just announced the successful cloning of three bull calves. And there's one of them, Gene. In 1998, in Hawaii, the first mouse was successfully cloned. In 2000, the first pig was cloned. In 2001, the first cat was cloned. In 2003, the first horse. And in 2005, researchers at the Seoul National University in South Korea cloned the first dog, an Afghan hound. They called her Snuppy, a blend of SNU for Seoul National University and Puppy. What exactly is cloning and why is it important? Ordinarily, plants and animals reproduce by sexual methods. Adult plants and animals produce special sex cells. Females produce eggs. Males produce sperm. Unlike all the other cells in an adult body, egg and sperm each contain only half the information needed to produce a new organism. But when the egg and sperm fuse together in sexual fertilization, a new fertilized egg results. This single cell, called a zygote, contains all the information needed. Half of the new organism's inheritance is thus from the male side, and half is from the female side. Now, sometimes plants and animals can also reproduce by a method, cloning. In cloning, a non-sexual cell from the adult is used to produce a new organism. This non-sexual cell itself contains not half, but all of the information needed. And the resulting organism, Dolly for instance, will not be a unique one-of-a-kind, but will be almost exactly like the adult whose cell was used for the cloning. Now in nature, plants often reproduce themselves by cloning. Farmers and gardeners long ago learned how to use plant cloning methods, like budding, grafting, to produce new trees, flowers, vegetables, and fruit-bearing plants. Until now, though, cloning has not been common in animals. Why not? Well, embryology, the study of the early stages of development in plants and animals, gives clues. How does a single cell, a fertilized egg, develop first into an embryo, and then how does that embryo develop into a newborn plant or animal? And like a modern computer, the fertilized egg needs a program, a set of instructions. In the computer, the programming is coded in special information language on the computer's chips, hard disks, and floppy disks. Much more information is needed to produce a living plant or animal. That information is carried not on chips or disks, but in the form of a chemical structure, deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA for short. DNA is, for the most part, concentrated in the nucleus of the zygote. It is wound on long, spindly structures called chromosomes. A human zygote has 23 pair of chromosomes, now, punctuated on each of these chromosomes, like beads on a string, are thousands of genes. And it is these genes that carry the actual information that directs the construction process that eventually results in a unique new person. For all the codes to do the job, the fertilized egg cell needs the right environment. Specifically, it needs to grow in a saltwater environment very similar to that of the ancient ocean. And ordinarily, it is the mother's uterus that provides such an environment. Important to our cloning story, however, in very recent years, scientists have been able to successfully duplicate the very early stages of this environment in laboratory culture dishes. 
when all the environmental conditions are right. That single fertilized egg quivers, doubles its chromosomes, and divides in two. And now you have two cells. And each of the two new cells gets a full set of chromosomes, of DNA, of genes. The two cells stick together, and the process continues. The two become four, the four become eight, eight becomes 16, 32, 64, and so forth. Five to seven days after fertilization, the embryo is still a clump of cells, embryonic stem cells, we call them. Each of these hundred or so stem cells has the potential to further divide and then differentiate to form blood cells, muscle cells, bone cells, nerve cells, skin cells, eventually to become the trillions of cells that make up a human baby. At this very early stage, however, this is only a potential. As yet, the embryo has no differentiated cells, no tissues, no organs, no feelings, no consciousness, no Reproductive cloning is not the only possibility, nor the most likely one to go on in the near future. Another new cloning technique, therapeutic cloning, is much closer to reality today. New work on embryonic stem cells has opened the door to new breakthroughs in disease and health. Right now, scientists are trying to figure out how to trigger embryonic stem cells with the right proteins so that they will turn into heart cells, or liver cells, or nerve cells. And once they succeed, a whole new way of treating injury and disease will develop, called therapeutic cloning. Say a person has a heart disease that has left much of his or her heart muscle destroyed. At present, the only suitable treatment would be a heart transplant. As you can see, the questions multiply, and research is supplying answers at a record pace. Many experts say the 21st century will be the century of biotechnology. As we learn more and more about how to understand and how to control life, we will need to work just as hard to gain the wisdom needed to make good choices about life. Within days of the Dali announcement, the President of the United States set up a special commission to study the legal, ethical, and social implications of cloning techniques. This commission made its first report in the summer of 1997. At this time, it is morally unacceptable for anyone in the public or private sector to attempt to create a child using somatic cell nuclear transfer cloning, said the report. The commission recommended that Congress enact legislation to legally prohibit such cloning, but that the legislation should include a sunset clause. That is, after a period of three to five years, the whole matter could be reviewed, and perhaps in the light of new findings, new legislation could be drafted. The Commission strongly supported continuing research on animal cloning for many of the reasons we have outlined in this program. It also supported continuing research on cloning human DNA and human cell lines. Finally, one of the most important of the Commission's recommendations was to encourage greater public education and debate about cloning and about all biotechnology. This program is designed to be one small step in that direction.